Hey everyone, hello and welcome to this CBT Nuggets webinar titled Jumpstart Your Networking Career with Keith Barker. Uh, before I hand things off to Keith, I just want to remind everyone that the chat window is available to you at any time during the webinar so that you guys can ask any questions you might have. And uh, Keith is going to do his best to answer some of those at the end of the webinar. Uh, I also just wanted to take a quick second to remind you that a recording of this uh, webinar is going to be posted to our blog, blog.cbtnuggets.com, in the next couple of days. Uh, but with that, everyone's waiting to hear from you, Keith. Take it away. Hey, thank you very much, Anthony. Well, for everybody who's joining us for this call, I first and foremost want to thank you for your time. That's the uh, one critical factor that we all have an equal amount of, and these days we hardly have enough of it. So first of all, thank you for your time. I remember when I was – I'm over 50, but when I was way younger, I remember having a sit-down meeting with my parents, and they asked me, they said, Keith, what do you want to do? And the frustrating part for me was I didn't know. I wanted to make money, or at least I wanted to have money, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. So I had a lot of really different jobs. For example, I worked at restaurants as a, first of all, you know, washing dishes, then waiting tables and so forth. I was a cook at one place. I had been a cashier. I worked as a banker, you know, as a, the person who stands the, you know, at the, does the transactions with people. And none of those jobs really was super exciting for me until, until my friends, I was working as a cashier and someone came in, a technician came in to fix the registers. And I thought to myself, this guy has a silver briefcase. He looks like he has a good car. He didn't have rust on it like mine did. And I thought, whatever he does, I'm not sure what he does, but I'd like to find out more about that. And that, my friend, was my jumpstart into the world of IT. And I think, I think it's really important for any career that we want to get into or do well in, we absolutely need to have the enthusiasm. So just from the starting point, if IT, information technology, is a career that you want to get in because you want to earn income, which is great, earn, earn money. However, it's not exciting to you or it's not interesting, I would strongly encourage you to look a different direction. Because if maybe if an attorney being a, is being attorney is super exciting, go that direction. Or if being a doctor is super exciting, go that direction. Or something else that have the enthusiasm because you're going to need it. And it's going to serve you well as you move forward in that career. Now, the challenge about working in IT is that there are so many different things that we could do in information technology. It's not just one thing. In fact, I did an interview with a blogger a few weeks ago, and the question was, Keith, can a network, can a network engineer just do network engineer stuff, or do they need to diversify? And so I spent about an hour, and I did some research on monster.com and dice.com and a few other resources that I they have available to me. And the responsibilities for a network engineer that customers were looking for, companies, were all over the board. And so what I would recommend, if you're just starting in the world of IT, in, in, in IT in general, just be aware that there is a laundry list of options that we have available to us that we could use or do regarding what we want to do. For example, networking is one aspect of information technology, the routers and the switches and the quality of service and the traffic shaping and all the other bells and whistles that go into getting data from point A to point Z and making sure all the points in between are cooperating together. We could do specializations in computers or operating systems and desktops, servers, virtualization. In fact, one of the really exciting things that I love is that as I started getting involved in virtualization with Citrix and VMware, I learned that doing virtualization requires a whole boatload of other skills, including networking. And instead of networking with physical gear, we're doing networking with logical entities inside of a virtualized environment. And of course, there's also programming, and the list goes on. There's also management and everything else that we could do as part of the world of IT. So um, the question, I guess, is which of these should you choose? And if you're not sure, you might want to do some you know, research and maybe take a couple of basic courses on those topics and see what resonates. I'd like you to imagine um, being with somebody you really enjoy being with and doing something you really enjoy doing 
And think about your, how that feels. It feels great. It feels great to do the things you love to do with the people you love to do it with. And if you can get that same type of feeling <laughs> to a lesser degree with work and your career, you're going to have a lot of success with it, regardless of what it is, because you have the enthusiasm to carry you through. Because I come from a networking background, that's my pride and joy. I've been doing it for, uh, since 1985, so I guess that's about 30 years now. If you're just starting and you're not quite sure if you want to go into programming or if you want to go into server administration or networking specifically, I would recommend starting off with Network Plus. Network Plus is a foundation level vendor neutral course from CompTIA that gives you the bells and whistles, the ins and outs, the fundamental components of how to build, implement, manage, and troubleshoot a network. Now, it's not specifically going to teach you how to do it on Cisco's environment or on Juniper's equipment or in an HP environment, but what it will do, it will give you the basic concepts that apply to all those environments. And here's the secret. I remember a commercial. I grew up in California many years ago, and I remember the Almond Growers Association. Their commercial was, uh, one can a week, that's all we ask. <laughs> they were trying to get us to eat one can of almonds a week to keep their revenue moving. Well, as far as you are concerned, I would encourage you to study. Whatever topic it is that you're studying, I would encourage you to study about 10 to 15 minutes a day in watching or reading the content regarding that technology. But the secret is, it's not just watching it. It's actually taking action and practicing what you have learned. See, I've noticed that the more senses that we put around something, for example, we, have, we can see, we can hear, we can smell, we can taste, we can touch. The more senses we involve in whatever it is, the better we are going to remember it and internalize it, and the better we will be with it. So the secret sauce, as far as getting up and running is, with networking anyway, I would strongly recommend that you either get a book, watch a video, something to that effect regarding Network Plus, and then practice, practice, practice those concepts that you've learned. Now, it just so happens that um, Kevin Wallace and I, we co-wrote a book called Network Plus, The CERT Guide. It's by Pearson Publishing, and it's on the shelves now. It's for the N10006 certification and at CBT Nuggets. I've got a really good course that I'm very happy about that walks you through the steps of Network Plus as well. And one of the big challenging pieces with any technology is the learning curve. I mean, think about it. <laughs> if you and I, I don't speak, um, I don't speak, what, I, don't, I, mean, I speak one language pretty well, and that's English. So let's take Spanish. I, I don't speak Spanish. But if I was going to learn Spanish, probably the first 10 to 15 hours of me studying and learning Spanish, that would probably be the most challenging because I'd have to learn the vocabulary and get used to it. There's that learning curve that's sometimes tough. And then once I get a, like a framework for the vocabulary and how the sentences are put together, after that point of the basics, I'd probably do much better and continue my learning much faster. I consider CBT Nuggets <laughs> to be the LCC, the Learning Curve Crusher, <laughs> because what a person can do if they want to learn a new technology, whether it's programming or servers or networking, they can go in and have the fundamentals condensed down in simple, easy to use and easy to understand terms to help get you past that, to help get the vocabulary in your mind regarding how the technology works, examples of how they fit, and then after you have the basics in place, your learning can really, really accelerate and take off. So work through the learning curve, and then practice hands-on. It's a, a one-two punch that's going to be very successful no matter what you're attempting to do in life. And again, the secret in life is just take steps in the right direction and you will end up at your destination. And what if you slip back or what if you take a detour? Well, as long as you keep walking, and that's the secret. You get up, you keep on walking in that direction, you will get there. Or if you don't get there, for example, you pass away before your time or what have you, at least you're a lot closer to that goal than those who just didn't move their feet at all. So moving your feet is a, is a huge step in the right direction. The other thing I wanted to chat about was how do you really get great at a technology? And I have a, I have a secret and a confession. 
I am really good at certain technologies during certain periods of my life. And I'll tell you when that is. It's when, I'm do I, when I dive into a technology, and that's pretty much all I focus on for a month or two months or three months. Maybe I have a big project I'm working on. And during that time, I am not only learning that technology, I'm, I'm reinforcing the technology, but I'm also practicing that technology hands-on, 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 hands-on. So people who um, ask me all the time on social media, they say, how in the world do you know all this stuff? And I say, well, I don't really know it all, all the time. I become very, very competent at a specific technology while I'm just waist deep and working with that technology. So how does that apply to us? Well, if, if you and I were applying for a job as an entry-level network technician, or maybe we start the help desk at a company, and we're starting at that point, we get the entry-level job, we, we demonstrate a willingness to learn, an ability to work with others, a positive attitude, and we get that into the job. The secret, once we get in, is to continue learning and to do more than what we're paid to do. It's not just um, do my job, 8 to 5, leave, don't care, come back, do it again. The secret, I think, is to do a little bit more than what we're required to do. And that will help you in any aspect as well. Um, also, I'm working on the Network Plus course right now. The new update is uh, N10-1006, N10-006. And I just finished the cabling section. And I have to tell you, I love it. I am a, I'm a, just an uber geek. I love it. Talking about cables that you plug into the switch, into the router, into the PC. Uh, I just, when I have a chance to sit down and revisit the details, I think it's amazing. For example, we take, <laughs> oh my gosh, you may think, Keith's excited about cabling. Yes, I am. This is an example of an unshielded twisted pair cabling. It's called unshielded because it doesn't have like a metal foil or anything that would protect those, those wires inside of this cable from electromagnetic interference or radio frequency interference. It's just like plastic, if you will. And then inside, we have four pairs of wires. Here's, and I've circled them. So if we wanted to make this usable by a computer network, an Ethernet network, we would strip away the outside plastic, we would bring it back a little bit, put them in line, something similar to this, and then there are some rules about which pins, which wires are going to go to which connectors, and then we would stuff it into this RJ45 connector in the correct order. We would use a crimping tool to make sure the little pins, this is pin one on the far left right here, make sure the pins touch or cut into the actual wires themselves, and then we end up with a, an RJ45, that's just a fancy name for the type of termination this is. We end up with an RJ45 uh, connector, that's the termination point for our unshielded twisted pair cable, which by the way is the most popular cable that we would have in an Ethernet network for connecting that network devices together. So, as, as I was putting together the nugget on cabling, it just reminded me of how, to me, exciting it is. Because if there's a problem, and this is the real meat of the issue, if there's a problem in the network, if you and I have the knowledge of the individual components that make that network go, we can then use that information, that knowledge, during our critical thinking for troubleshooting. And like right now, I've got an a unshielded twisted pair cable any user, like you're going through our nuggets, you can actually take a cable, look at it, and then verify what type of, you know, what the pinouts are, and verify if it's cabled correctly by just simply looking at it like that. So uh, call me, again, call me a geek, but I love, I love computer networking. I love the details, and with some knowledge and experience, you can apply those skills and be useful to your company. Another aspect, uh, besides just knowing the details of courses to apply that knowledge. So if you and I were working at a company, and let's say we get a call from a user named Bob, and let's say Bob is sitting right here at, let me get my pen out here. Let's say that Bob is sitting here at computer number two. And Bob says, I can't get to the internet. And we think, oh no, all hope is lost. As far as our troubleshooting skills, if we could ask Bob, well, Bob, can you, you know, connect to the router or can you connect to the firewall or can you connect to the internal server? 
And by getting his response to that, we could then say, well, if Bob can reach the internal server, that means that the cable and the connectors going from Bob's PC to the switch, those must be okay because he's getting over to the server. And then we could ask other questions like, are other users unable to get out to the internet? And by using a, the knowledge that we have and the critical skills and the critical thinking that we can gain through courses like Network Plus, and then applying those, we can actually troubleshoot a network. I mean, in the real sense, we can troubleshoot, identify what the problem is, narrow it down, and then correct the problem. And let me ask you a question. Is it valuable for a company to have a network engineer or technician who has the ability in real words, in real terms, who has the ability to identify problems when they come up and fix them? And I would say, absolutely yes. And that, my friends, is the level that we want to get to with any of our skills in the world of IT. We want to know how, not just how it works, not just how to implement it and manage it, but also how to troubleshoot. Because at the end of the day, most of our networks are in place. They get rolled out. They're sitting there. It's the problems that come up and the challenges that come up that they want us to use our skills to go ahead and refine. That's why I like Jeremy's analogy. Jeremy said he had a, a friend who was doing switch implementation. These are switches. It's a layer two switch. It's a device on an Ethernet network that makes forwarding decisions based on layer two of the uh, protocol suite or the OSI reference model. And this technician that was do, you know, deploying these switches, he was a CCIE. That's a Cisco Certified Internetwork Expert. And uh, this, the question was, how come they're paying a CCIE, whatever that CCIE makes, how come they're paying a CCIE level person to do basic work that an entry level person could do? And his answer was, he, it's not because a CC, uh, an, entry, an entry level person couldn't implement it, it's because if a problem arises, I'm the CCIE who can solve that problem. And hands-on practice, whether you're just starting out or whether you've been in the business for a while, whether you're working with programming or servers or networks or virtualization, hands-on practice is the key to improving your skills in that area. And I, I have to tell you, in every course I create, I am a, I'm a hands-on freak. I want to just make sure that what I'm communicating is really what's happening. And so I lab up everything many times and I use protocol anal analyzers. And Oftentimes, I learn new things or look at things in a way I'd never considered before simply because I'm revisiting it with the hands-on practice. So I pass on that same tip to you, my friends. If you want to get better or if you want to get good at any technology, that's exactly how you do it is by getting hands-on practice with those skills. Now, as far as standing out, uh, there is a lot of competition. I'm not I just a lot of competition for any job worth having. Let's just put it that way. If there's a job worth having, whether it's a great environment, uh, good coworkers, good benefits, good compensation, if there's a good job like that, it's very likely that there's lots of competition. Would you agree with me on that? There's a lot of competition for any good job, including in networking or programming or any of the other fields of IT. So here's what I would recommend to assist you, my friend, in standing out above the crowd. And the interesting thing is when we stand out above the crowd, it's not just about it's not just about making ourselves look good. It's actually about being good. <laughs> That's the secret. And helping others, assisting others, because when all when the tide rises, all boats rise. So here's a few specifics with standing out. Do more than is required. At work, in your studies. I remember my first job with EDS, Electronic Data Systems, back in the 1980s. One of the things that I did in my interview was I asked, is there anything that I can start doing now where if I got hired, I may have said when I get hired, I'm not sure how cocky I was, but if I get hired, is there anything I can do start studying right now that would help me be better prepared for when I actually do start? And Anita Martinez, I don't know if she's still, um, around or not. I haven't. I should probably look her up on Facebook, see if I can contact her. She was my first manager. She gave me a Hewlett Packard printer manual that I could start studying. And I took it and I started studying. And that was my first job in the world of IT. And that was back in, I think, in 1980, 1984-1985-ish. That was my very first job for electronic data systems. And also, do what's more than required in relationships as well. 
And this applies to your family life, your home life, your social life. Be a, be a good person. It pays. The best way you can be rewarded if that's what you're after is be a sincere and authentic and genuine and helpful person to others. Do more than is required. And karma, or whatever you want to call it, uh, is, it feels real. <laughs> karma feels real. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Is that what goes around comes around. If you're a good person and you're helping others, that's going to, be, that's going to come back. I would encourage you to make ethical choices all the time, even when no one's looking. Just think, is this an ethical choice? You know, for example, um, <laughs> I won't give you any examples too close to home, but if there's a choice you have to make and no one's watching, think to yourself, if in two years somebody was looking back at this situation and they saw the choices, would they think the choice I'm about to make is an ethical one? If the answer is no, if you're taking a shortcut or you're doing something you shouldn't do, don't do it. And that way you can have a clear conscience and move forward with, a lot of energy, putting all your effort into really learning technologies, doing a good job for others, and being rewarded for that effort. Always help others. I remember I worked at Paramount Pictures back in 93, 94-ish. Uh, I was when uh, just near the time that um, Forrest Gump came out. In any event, I met uh, an engineer there, and he was a contractor, and he was amazing to me. And he had all these skills and these abilities and so I took him out to lunch, which is another recommendation I have for you. Take people who have those skills, take them out to lunch and pick their brains, ask them what you should do. And he said this. He said, I am always really nice to everyone, and here's why. And he was you know, willing. To, I was just an entry level. You know, I was pretty much nobody <laughs> at that point. And uh, so he was having lunch with me, which was very nice of him. And he said, be nice to everybody because you never, never know when you're going to be working for that person or when you're going to run into that person again. And so just, just avoid and never do any situation where it be negative or nasty or dishonest or anything else because, again, what goes around comes around. I would also have you prioritize your work. For example, I have things that I have to do this week. <laughs> they are on my to-do list. And I also know that there's no way that I'm going to get to do everything on my to-do list. So I would recommend prioritizing the items on your to-do list to do the ones that are going to have the highest priority and are the most urgent to get done. And that way, at least, if you're only going to do a few things on your to-do list, you can do the ones that have the most relevant in your life. And let me actually show you a quick example. I've got time. I've got a couple more minutes. Um, this is a technique I use. It's called a priority checklist. It was made with a really fancy program. I used, I think, Word. I think you could use Excel. I think you could also use a piece of paper with a pen. And what I simply do is this. I put today's date, so whatever the date is, and then I put the thing I have to do, you know, thing you know, one, thing two, thing three, thing four, thing five. And then after I have them listed, I also put the very next step over here on the far right. For example, if I was going to work on thing number one, what's the very first thing, the very next step I would take in doing that thing? And I'd write it out here. So I'd, for example, let's say I have to pay a bill. I'd probably have to go online and look up the bill. Right? Or if I had to write a document, I would have to open my word processor and start typing. Or if I, you know, just whatever the first step is. And then you would rank them. This is really helpful. At least it is for me. And that's why I'm sharing this tip for you. It'll help you prioritize your life. It'll help prioritize your tasks. And it will help you stand out because you'll be the person who can actually get stuff done in your life better than the others who are struggling with it. So then over here I'd write a short-term urgency. So for example, short-term urgency, a number one would be very low, three would be high. For example, if your rent is due today and you have to pay your rent, and you just admit, that would be a, for example, that would be a, a level three. Are you with me? It's short-term urgent, has to be done right now. And then the next column is long-term importance. For example, what is the impact long-term, let's say a year from now or two years from now, if I do this thing or I don't do this thing? Let's say it's 10 minutes a day of studies. Let's say this task is I need to watch Nuggets 10 minutes a day to help get by the learning curve and learn this technology. But if you want to be a network engineer or if you want to be a programmer or if you want to be a virtualization specialist, you might say that that is a long-term importance of a three because it will change your life. 
And over here in the short-term importance, you might say, well, I, my goal is 10 minutes a day. Uh, I probably need to do that today, so that's going to be a priority of two. And then you total your column over here. So over here we have a five, and let's say we had some other numbers for our other tasks. <laughs> three, two, and three. So then you total them up. So here we have four, four, five, three, and six. And then what we would do is we'd simply say, here's what I'm going to work on first today. I've got to do this thing. Whatever it is, that's the best use of my time. And then I would do my five, and then I would do my four. And if I never got to my three, I'd simply say, no big deal. I worked hard today. I met my highest priority objectives. And then tomorrow I make a new sheet and I continue on. And that way you're getting the most impact based on what you really want out of your life and the tasks you want to do based on a priority system. So I would have you to stand out. I would prioritize and maybe just focus on your top three tasks based on that priority. I also use the technique uh, where I would meet with my, my manager. This is at um, several companies ago. I would meet with my manager and I would say, what are the top three things that are expected for me in this job, that are most important for the business. And he prioritized those. Okay, these are the first, the top three things. And as an employee, I would make sure that those top three things were always met. For it's very clear for me in my current job. Um, my, my top priority at CBT Nuggets, top priority is to make really effective nuggets. Videos that are fun to watch, they're real, and they will assist people in getting through the learning curve and successful in their careers. That's my job. And so everything else in my life, as far as work goes, takes a second seat to focusing and making those critical nuggets. So that's a little insight for me. So for those of you who want to pursue networking as a career, um, I would start with CompTIA's Network Plus. It's a great foundation. It'll help you get a real-world sense of what's involved and the, mix, the pieces that all work together as part of a computer network, routers, switches, protocol stack, TCP IP, and so forth. And then if you decide, you know what, uh, networking isn't quite for me, then you could go and take a look, for example, at an entry-level operating system class like Windows or perhaps virtualization with VMware or Citrix, some entry-level course. And then when you find your passion, that's what I would go for and that's what I would attack. You'd also want to do some you know, asking around, are these skills that customers and businesses are willing to pay for? <laughs> which is also really important. If you want to study uh, basket weaving and become the best basket weaver on the planet, that's great. Uh, I don't know what the demand is because that's not my field, but I don't know what the demand is for baskets or basket weaving skills. So you want to verify also that there's actually jobs and opportunities regarding that as well. So we are just about out of time. Um, let's do this. Uh, Anthony, let me go ahead and ask you, do we have any questions that people have typed in during this webinar that you want me to go ahead and take a look at? And actually, I can answer that myself. Uh, Anthony put a few over into the queue for me. So let me go ahead and just peruse that for just a moment. Um, Anthony, would you do me a huge favor? While I just peruse these to choose which one I can do in the time we have, will you go ahead and share any closing comments regarding recording or anything else you want to say? And then I'll go ahead and try to take at least one or two of these questions. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, before Keith hands off and starts answering some of your questions, I was just going to take the time to thank all of you for spending time with us and Keith, you as well. Uh, and just to remind you guys again that uh, a recording is going to be posted to our blog, blog.cbtnuggets.com. Okay. All right. Um, there's a bunch of questions in here. I can, uh, let me just take a couple. Uh, I've got a question asking, can you please at the end of the presentation recommend for us a networking career path, which will be useful in the next two or three years? And I, <laughs> virtualization is what I would recommend. Virtualization, both of systems and computers and networking, will be huge. So if you're off to a virtualization path, I would start with Network Plus. I would also strongly encourage Cisco's ICD-1 and ICD-2 which are the CCNA equivalent or fundamentals for Cisco networking. And then I would take that information and I would parlay that into virtualization. And the secret is this. As you get into virtualization, you'll see weak areas that you have. Like, oh my gosh, I don't know how you know, Active Directory works, or I'm not sure how Windows um, profiles work and so forth. And as you increase your knowledge, you'll identify areas that you want to study more in, and you can branch out to grab those as well. So I would say, 
the basics of Network Plus and CCNA as a foundation, a basic level of understanding regarding networking, and then I would move into virtualization. Now, if I, for my own children, who, if they ask me that question, that's what I would tell them. I've got a couple of kids in college. One is studying um, web development. That's what he loves. That's what he wants to do, and that's what I encourage him to do for that reason. So make sure you love it, and virtualization is here to stay. Um, and uh, one last question is asks, how do you compare CCENT, which is the entry level for Cisco, to Network Plus for the entry level? Here's my strong recommendation. If you are brand new to networking, I would take Network Plus first. Specifically, I would use our CBT Nuggets at, you know, for, for Network Plus. Kevin Wallace's book and I, or book is also a great reference to have. But I would start out with Network Plus, and then immediately, I would go ahead and do ICND 1 right after that. Why? Because like 70% of everything that we learned in Network Plus is going to be exactly relevant to Cisco's ICD-1. So in ICD-1, it's a vendor-specific certification. So you take the concepts you learned in Network Plus and apply them to the CCNA or the ICD-1, and that's what I would do. I would do both of those in that order, and you'll just be skyrocketing because the foundation you learn in Network Plus, and then you reinforce that with vendor-specific skills, you'll be unstoppable. And then the secret would be to continue on that journey, continue learning, and continue growing ICND2 for the full CCNA. And if you love routing and switching, continue on with the CCNP route switch from Cisco. Uh, and we did have a couple other questions in the queue, but I'm already over. So um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and on behalf of uh, CBT Nuggets, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us for this webinar. Anthony, I appreciate you putting this together for us. If you want to reach me, here are the ways that you could do that. Uh, I've got a Facebook page and a Twitter handle and a YouTube you know, channel and so forth. I think there's like 50,000 people <laughs> that subscribe to me on YouTube. There's over 100 nuggets, 100 videos there. Also, uh, if you're not yet a member at CBT Nuggets, you can do a free seven-day trial to check out our content and get a feel for it. And, uh, and whatever journeys you take in the world of, of networking or IT in your careers, we humbly wish you the absolute best of success. And if there's anything we can do to assist you as a learner, as a person, please don't hesitate to ask. And thanks again for attending. Bye, everybody.